Triple H is the current WWE Chief Content Officer. Leading the company into a new era, the game has the pencil of the promotion firmly in his hands. The Cerebral Assassin had a successful in-ring career in the late 1990s and the 2000s. However, he was also involved in a fair share of controversies. The veteran also played a role in the infamous Montreal SC asterisk 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 job. For those of you who don't know, the infamous Montreal incident has long been considered one of the most controversial moments in pro wrestling history. In 1997, then WWE champion Bret Hart, who was set to leave the promotion, defended his title against Shawn Michaels at Survivor Series. However, the hitman refused to lose to the Heartbreak Kid due to real life issues. Hence, Vince decided to s asterisk 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 w him, as the referee called for the bell immediately after Sean had Brett locked in a sharpshooter, leading to a controversial title change. But what was Triple H's role in this? Well, as was revealed in the third episode of Netflix's Mr. McMahon docuseries, the King of Kings was the one who indirectly gave Vince McMahon the idea for the SC asterisk 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 job. According to the Cerebral Assassin, he was on a phone call with Vince and Shawn Michaels when the boss revealed that Brett would not relinquish the title. Triple H revealed that he told the former WWE chairman that if he, Brett, won't do it, do it for him. There was a phone call that happened with Shawn, myself, and Vince. Vince said, look, Brett's not gonna do it. He refuses to do it. I don't remember all the specifics but I was the one that was like, F asterisk asterisk K that. If he won't do it, do it for him, he revealed. 42 colon 25 dash 42 colon 45. Triple H was told to deny having any knowledge of the Montreal SC asterisk 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 job. Now we know that Triple H was involved, but did he admit it at the time? Well, the answer to that question is no. However, that was because the game was given strict instructions not to. As was revealed later on in the documentary, the former WWE world champion was instructed by his future father-in-law, Vince McMahon, to refrain from revealing his involvement. Aware of just how much heat would come from pulling off such a controversial finish, Vince McMahon wanted to protect his superstars. So, while it is true that both the Cerebral Assassin and Shawn Michaels were involved in the controversial finish, Mr. McMahon took all the blame upon himself. Looking back, it makes sense why McMahon decided to put a gag order of sorts on his stars. If word had gotten out that they were involved, things probably wouldn't have ended well for either Triple H or Michaels. In the annals of professional wrestling, few events have sparked as much controversy and discussion as the Montreal screw job. This incident, which took place on November 9, 1997, at the Survivor Series pay-per-view in Montreal, Canada, involved a pre-planned betrayal of Bret Hart by Vince McMahon and an unsuspecting referee. While the primary figures in this drama were undoubtedly Bret Hart, Vince McMahon, and Shawn Michaels, one man who played a crucial role in the unfolding events was Paul Levesque, better known as Triple H. To understand Triple H's contribution to this infamous moment, it is essential to delve into his actions, words, and the broader context of the wrestling landscape at that time. The context of the screw job. To fully grasp Triple H's involvement, it is important to understand the context surrounding the Montreal screw job. By late 1997, professional wrestling was experiencing a renaissance, fueled in part by the rise of the Attitude Era. Vince McMahon's WWF was locked in a fierce battle with WCW, and ratings were everything. Bret Hart, then the reigning WWF champion. Triple H's position. At this time, Triple H was still rising through the ranks of the WWF. Known for his intelligence and work ethic, he was becoming one of McMahon's trusted talents, a position that would eventually lead to his pivotal role in shaping the company's future. However, he was not yet the executive figure he would become later, he was a performer caught between the conflicting interests of loyalty to Hart and the necessity of preserving the WWF's interests. As the events unfolded, Triple H found himself in an awkward position. He was a close friend of Shawn Michaels, who was deeply involved in the plans for the screw job, and he also had a good relationship with Bret Hart, having shared the ring with him on numerous occasions. 
this duality made Triple H a crucial link in the chain that would ultimately lead to Hart's betrayal. The plan takes shape. In the weeks leading up to Survivor Series, the atmosphere in the locker room was thick with tension. Wrestlers were divided in their loyalties, and the prospect of Brett leaving for WCW loomed large. While the plot to betray Hart was primarily orchestrated by McMahon, Triple H was privy to many of the discussions regarding the plan. He witnessed the growing resentment between Hart and McMahon, and how the latter was willing to go to extreme lengths to avoid losing the championship without a proper finish. Triple H's conversations with Vince during this period were likely pivotal. His insight into the locker room and his understanding of Hart's character would have been valuable to McMahon, who was navigating a minefield of emotions and egos. When the plan was finally put into action, it was Triple H who was tasked with supporting Michaels and executing the betrayal. In many ways, he was the enforcer of a plan that would have lasting repercussions on the industry. The Night of the Screwjob on the night of the Survivor Series, as tensions reached a boiling point, Triple H was on site, engaged in discussions with McMahon, Michaels, and the referee, Earl Hebner. When the time came for the main event, Hart was set to face Michaels for the WWF Championship. The plan involved a scenario where Hart would be put in the sharpshooter, leading to the referee calling for the bell before he submitted. As the match progressed, Triple H remained focused on his role. Despite being friends with Hart, he was aware of the stakes involved. McMahon had positioned the screw job as not only a way to keep the championship from going to WCW but also as a way to protect the company's image. Triple H's loyalty to McMahon and the WWF ultimately took precedence over his friendship with Hart. What he said, the fallout. In the aftermath of the screw job, Triple H's comments and reflections on the incident provide a window into his mindset. During various interviews, he expressed his mixed feelings about the events that unfolded. On one hand, he understood the rationale behind McMahon's decision, recognizing the business implications. On the other hand, he acknowledged the emotional toll it took on everyone involved, especially Hart. One notable moment came during a 2005 interview, where Triple H reflected on the situation, stating, What we did to Brett was wrong, but in the business sense, it was necessary. His words encapsulate the moral ambiguity that surrounded the screw job. It was a moment of survival for the WWF, but it was also a deeply personal betrayal that left scars on Hart and the wrestling community. Legacy and Influence The Montreal screw job did not just impact Hart, it altered the landscape of professional wrestling. The event ushered in a new era of storytelling and character development. In the years that followed, 